Hey guys, welcome to video number five of my series of videos where I show you the PC that I'm building for 2021. So in my first four videos, I showed you the motherboard, CPU, power supply, graphics card, memory, storage, and all-in-one cooler. There is, of course, one essential component missing, and it is the PC case. And it's a big, heavy boy that's making my camera and my desk shake. So this is it. This is the Thermaltake Core P3. So what I'm going to do in this video is show you uh, this case. I'm going to talk about its features, why I bought it. I'm going to open it up. We'll take the case out. We'll look at the accessories, etc. But I'm also going to start the build. I'm going to put the motherboard in there, the power supply, the graphics card. We're going to just we're going to start putting all the pieces of the puzzle together. It is about half seven at night right now, so I will be doing at least one costume change throughout this video, but through the magic of television, you won't even know that that's happened, of course. So let's have a closer look at what this case is all about. This is the Thermal Take Core P3, and I've got the Snow Edition. It is available in black. It's also available in green and red. And there's different variations of this from Thermal Take. You know, there's the P1 and the P5 and many other variations. Now you can see here, it is an open air case, and that wasn't originally what I was going for, but all of the cases I was going for, they're out of stock. They're not in stock right now. So I started thinking out of the box, I guess you can say, and I turned my attention to this. Now, one of the reasons I like this is you can still use this, you know, as a traditional PC case. You don't have to use liquid cooling, although its modular design is, you know, quite favorable to that. But it can be used as a test bench as well. So even if I do end up getting a different case, it's going to be very easy to transfer components into the other case. And I can, you know, perhaps move my other PC into this. But failing that, I can use this as a test bench because this can be used vertically or horizontally. And a lot of people even mount it against the wall. It's a really flexible case. And it was only about £130 in the UK. So but for what you can do with this, I think that's a really good price. So you can see how this looks with liquid cooling. And that's what it's going to be like naked. Now you can see it's got a bracket here that allows you to place a graphics card horizontally instead of putting it on the board. You just put it, ho a, well, I guess you'd say vertically actually instead of horizontally. But you can put it separately on a bracket above the power supply. And they actually provide a PCI Express riser card there for you to do that. Now that's a Gen 3.0 uh, riser card and I don't know how effective that's going to be because I've got a Gen 4 board, but we'll, we'll, uh, we'll deal with that when we come across that uh, and we'll see how it gets on. But it's a, it's a flexible case, there's a lot you can do with this and that's really what I like about this. The fact that I'm going to use this in some way or another over the next few years. So I went for the white version, I think it looks good. You see it's built for makers and there's so many different variations of this. That's one of the things that attracted me to this case. You'll see lots of different people modding this in different ways. There's a lot of people that are using 3D printers to put different brackets onto it and all that as well. And yeah, it's this modular versatile design that really makes it interesting to me. So you can see the three-way placement layout. You can put it just on your desk if you want. You can, you know, there's a kind of traditional layout, just the hard drives, etc really really flexible and yeah it's going to be a lot of fun building in this case it looks really really good so without further ado let's have a closer look at the Thermaltake Core P3 we'll get it open we'll see what's in there so before I open the box I want to sit here blurry in the background because I want to show you these specifications here now all of these are of course on the official website you can see the dimensions you've got the tempered glass side panel expansion slots, the drive base, etc. But I want to point out the fact that this motherboard does have markers for an ATX board, micro ATX board, or an ITX board. You do have fan support down the side for either three 120mm fans or three 140mm fans, or if you prefer, up to a 360mm or a 420mm radiator. So that's pretty good. And at the bottom, you can see all the different uh, clearance there for the CPU cooler, the, v, uh, the graphics card or VGA length and the power supply. And that really is one of the reasons that I was attracted to this is that it's got great clearance, it's very flexible, and you don't really have to worry too much about does this fit in my case and all that. 
just, just about everything will work. In this case, it will fit due to its open nature. So let's get this open. Okay, so I have the polystyrene out of the box and this looks to be the right way up. I hope. And it's fair tape holding it up. So there's the glass uh, panel at the top here, the tempered glass. So this is the tempered glass panel. And here we have the case itself, we've got the case itself, and yeah, I mean, if I, I jump over the overhead camera, I'm not even sure it's going to fit in the overhead camera, but we'll jump over here, and my overhead camera is too low in its position right now for you to see it all, uh, but yeah, there it's there, and I'll maybe have to raise that for you to see it all, but yeah, this is quite a big case actually, it's a really big case, but it will be very easy to build on this, because, you can get it here, very easy to build on this simply because of its open nature and you don't have to really work around uh, the side of the case etc so underneath we have everything else we've got all the bars all the brackets we've got the pci express riser cable we've got the manual which i will be referring to so all really set out really well if you look at it it's really uh, presented really well really good what they've done here so I've got all of the accessories here, all of the brackets and different things here. And it looks a little bit daunting at first when you see it, but it doesn't look too bad actually. So I've got the manual here and that's got a list of the different accessories and screws and different things there. But most of this is self-explanatory. You've got the two legs, which is what the PC will actually sit on when it's vertical. And then you've got the four poles and these will be used to connect from the PC case to the tempered glass and you know they just screw in They're quite heavy actually uh, over here we've got the the bracket thing that sits on top of the power supply and then you've obviously got the you know for the PCI Express cards and all that there and there's a you know lots of different brackets and screws about the place down at the bottom here you've got the PCI Express 3 riser card then you've got a 3.5 inch hard drive bracket and there's some 2.5 inch brackets as well so it looks a lot, when you first open this up, it looks like there's a lot to deal with, etc. But when you actually look at it, it doesn't look that bad. Okay, let's set this bad boy up. This is it. What? Okay, so this is the PC case. And pretty straightforward when you see it here, you've got, you know, Thermaltake logo. Um, this is where your motherboard will go, the power supply will go down here. And here is where you can put fans, hard drives, or in my case, a 360 radiator for the all-in-one cooler. Around the back here is, you've got thumb screws to take this back off, or there should be thumb screws. Yes, oh, it's actually, I'll need a screwdriver for that, um, and I'll get that open. And yeah, so I'll be putting like hard drives, I'll put my SSD and things like that in the back here. And most of the work will be at the front. So looking at the front of the case, you've got the power button, you've got two USB 3 here, two USB 2.0, you've got headphones, microphone, and a reset button. Now, what I noticed right away there was you've got a guide, you can get it, you've got a guide here and it shows you, if I zoom down, hopefully I'll be able to see that. You can see here it says ITX, so it's got I for ITX, A for ATX, then M for micro ATX, and throughout the board you'll see M, M, a, M, I, and this just tells you where to put your standoff screws so that when you're putting your motherboard on, you don't put it into the wrong position. So before I can start building, I need to see what screws and other accessories are available to me. So there's cable ties in there. We've got um, the speaker uh, connection. It's weird, they've got a lot of things in bags, there's a lot of things not in bags here, so there's a lot of different screws. I will have to refer to the manual for some of this, just to make sure uh, I've got the right ones, but clearly these are for the legs, etc. The base. Um, yeah, a lot of screws, a lot of washers, and 
we've got the connection for the speaker as well. So organized chaos here, but I'll be able to figure all this out and then use the screws to, you know, attach the SSDs, etc. So I thought the accessories were all packaged really well. And normally the manual is not something I really refer to when I'm building a PC, but with this case, it is worthwhile because when you get all the screws, they're in these bags, but there's lots of different screws mixed in together. They're not all individual and they're not all labeled. So what you need to do is refer to the start, the contents, and it'll tell you the part name, the number that should be there and what it's used for. And you'll have to refer back to that because on the actual pages where it shows you what to do, it just says fix foot stand by screws. It doesn't tell you which screws. So you need to go back here and work out which screws they are. Now, this part here, putting in the horizontal legs, these, you wouldn't think these would be necessary because I'm putting the case on vertically, that's how I'll be using the case, but I'm gonna put these on because it allows me to flip the case over whenever I want, and I don't have to worry about these screws scratching my desk. So I'm now going to attach the main feet and this is what's going to hold the PC case and the motherboard and all components up and it's quite simple there's four screw holes here and they're just going to screw in like that look at that he's all grown up now so it wouldn't be a PC build if you didn't get something wrong along the way. Now, I haven't made any mistakes, but when I was looking at the accessories earlier on, I looked at these and just assumed they were for a 2.5 inch drive, and I thought that would be for a 3.5 inch drive. That's not true. These are to secure the power supply, and these will sit down at the bottom. This bracket, this white bracket, is actually for liquid cooling, which you can put down at the bottom, but I assume I can maybe change this and maybe use it for fans or something else. But it's worth knowing that because the brackets for the SSDs and the hard drive are already built in. And if I switch to the overhead camera, you should be able to see that they're there already. So my bad there. So what I'm going to do at this point is attach these brackets to the PSU and I can put it there. Now you can put this in any orientation that you want, but I'm going to put it down so that the fan faces the floor. To me, that makes the most sense so that you're not putting hot air up to the graphics card. So I just need to attach these brackets with some screws and then I can attach them to the case. Half the bow here is picking up the right screw. There's so many screws that look so similar. So I'm just securing the power supply and that's it done. And this wasn't difficult, but I made it a little bit harder for myself because I didn't check this whole package. This bracket, you know, that got attached okay, but this one I had difficulty because I was using this one. Now this is the one that was next to this one in the box. And I assumed it would be the bracket for the power supply. I believe this is for the power supply, but perhaps a different orientation or a different power supply size. The bracket that I needed for my power supply was underneath another bracket in the box. I didn't know it was there, but that's my fault for not checking the box. Once I got that bracket, very easy. You just attach it to the bottom here and you attach the other side here. So now I'm going to secure the motherboard to the Thermotake P3. And there's a little diagram in the manual that shows you where the positions are roughly, but it's easier to just follow the PC case itself and just look for the A's for my ATX board. So I just really have to go through all these and screw them in. So all the motherboard standoff screws are in. I tightened most of them just with my fingers, but I had to use a screwdriver for two or three. But I had a quick look at the bottom of the motherboard and this one here, I need to take out. So it does say AM, ATX, micro ATX on the case, but this one actually hits the back plate of my motherboard. So I need to take it out. So I'm gonna put the motherboard onto the case here. And normally what I would do is put the memory and the hard drive and different things onto the motherboard already. But the open nature of this case means that there's kind of no reason to do that. One of the reasons you do that is because it saves you a lot of time, you know, leaning over with a closed case. But with a case like this, it's, there's not really any point. So this is the Gigabyte X570 board, which I showed you before. And this is the, the Ryzen 5950X. 
and you can see where all the holes for the standoff screws are and it's just a matter of lining everything up and pushing it down there. So what I need to do now is just get some screws and secure this. So the motherboard is attached to the case and the case is, as you can see, vertical. It's now standing up and I think it's just wobbling a little bit just because it's on this polystyrene to protect my desk just now and it's probably shaking the camera but yeah it seems okay this way and you should be able to see what's going on a little bit better than before because throughout this video I've not been able to show you this build as well as I hoped because my camera is kind of set up for smaller things, mobile phones, it's not set up for big things like this and I could have raised my overhead camera but it would have meant changing the microphone position and changing everything around. It just wasn't worth the hassle. But now you should be able to see what's going on. So the memory is now on the motherboard. Very easy to do. I've also taken off the first and the second of the three thermal guards, the M2 thermal guards. And if I show you from the overhead camera, you can see the first one has X570 Oris Master branding on it. The other ones do not, but it's still a nice design, I would say. Now they all, and you can see with the stickers there, they all have thermal heat pads. So when you put this down, this will stick to your NVMe SSD or your SATA based SSD if you use that. Now that's really good. My last motherboard had one slot, had three slots, but one slot that had a thermal guard with a heat pad. But these, Gen 3 SSDs run hot and the Gen 4 ones run really hot and it's important to cool these down because if you don't you won't get those higher read and write speeds you certainly won't get sustained read and write speeds maybe over time it will drop once the temperatures shoot up so it's really good it's a little thing but it's a nice feature of this motherboard It's funny, the Thermaltake P3 accessory kit puts pretty much all the screws in one or two bags and my motherboard has got a separate bag for every single M2 screw and every single M2 standoff. <laughs> Unbelievable. So you can see I finally have some cables connected to the power supply. I've connected the 24 pin power, CPU power, and I've got a SATA cable connected to this 2.5 inch SSD, which I put here, which you can see just now, but the radiator and fans will cover that. Now I removed the 3.5 inch hard drive trays as well. Down here, we've got all the, the front panel connectors. So you've got all the, the power switch and all that here. Um, USB 3.0, USB 2.0, and then HD audio which I've taken out for a second and I'll explain why. Now, I did run into one minor problem. At the front of the motherboard here, I've got two USB 3.0 headers and this one here, USB 3.01, isn't working. The second one's fine. I can take that one in and out, but this one, it's got one pin that's kind of misaligned a little bit, but there's one pin that's really misaligned. Now, I'm not sure if it was like that before. These pins are always liable to bend. I really don't like that port. Maybe when I was, you know, yanking this cable out and pulling the cable, maybe it's bent the pin a little bit. I don't know. It could have been the motherboard. It could have been me. I don't know. But the reason this is hanging out just now is because I'm going to feed these cables through a different point. You can see here that I've, I've fed them through here, but there's another hole down at the bottom here. Now, the problem is, is that if I do that, you know, the cables are kind of getting in the way once the bracket's on. So what I'm thinking is that I can run some of these cables below but I need to put this bracket on to see how I actually do that so I might as well put this on just now and then I can fix these cables. So as you can see the bracket is now on. It's quite smart how it works actually. There's just two screws that secure it to the case but there's a standoff here which you can see here. This actually connects this 
to the power supply and you just secure it down with another screw and it just secures it to the power supply. So the power supply is acting like an anchor for the bracket to make it more secure. So quite smart the way that it's all kind of set out. Now I've routed the three cables here at the left hand side underneath but I've put the, the front panel connectors through here, just through where the main power supply is as well. Just kind of put it to the side here. I guess I could put this up here as well. That's another option, maybe something I can do later. If I turn it around, you can see the cables. Now, I've not really did a lot with the cables. This SATA cable that I've used is quite long, so I've tied that up and I've just held these together, but I've just routed everything through here and yeah, it's, it's fairly easy to work with. Would have been good to have some, you know, kind of tie points to just make things a little bit tidier, but for the most part, it's it's fairly tidy, I think. So now I'm going to attach my all-in-one cooler. This is the ASUS ROG Strix LC360 RGB White Edition. It's a ridiculous name, but this is what I've got. So essentially what I'm going to do is put the radiator here, and then the pump will go over the CPU. Once the radiator is on, I can attach the three 120 millimeter fans and you know I can power them, etc. from the motherboard. And then I just have to apply the pump to the CPU. I just need to put it on top. Now, it should be fairly simple to do that. You should be able to see that the thermal paste is pre-applied. So, you know, once I put it on, it's, it's, it's done. I don't have to mess about with thermal paste or anything. Fairly straightforward. There's a few cables to connect as well because of the RGB and you know, I need to put the mounting bracket and all that on, but it should be straightforward. I knew I forgot something. So I swiveled the PC case around there to attach the radiator, but I noticed I forgot to add the SATA cable for the 2.5 inch SSD. So I've just connected it to the SSD and you can see it here. And I just need to push it in like that. It's quite good how it's laid out. You know, it's got three and three there, the six in total, but there's little protectors here. Previously in the motherboards I used, I always had to connect them on top, but they've got them at a right angle here, which really does help with the cabling. So the radiator and the three 120 fans are all connected and for each fan, there is a four pin connector for the fan itself and then a three pin connector for RGB. So I've positioned this all, all the cables are at the side so that I can kind of route them behind. So all the fan cables are routed round to the back now and you can see they're all connected to the connectors. I've crudely tied them together but they are looping round and the RGB fan is coming into this one and the system fan is coming to this one. So this is system fan one, all the rest of the system fans are down here so I could reroute this one down here. I'll play around with it and see what the best option is. The micro B cable here is for RGB and it will attach to the all-in-one cooler. And that's what I, need, what I need to do now. I need to attach this AMD mounting bracket and then I just need to screw it on. So the pump is now on the 5950X. The biggest problem that I had was that the pre-applied Intel mounting bracket was really, really difficult to get off. I just couldn't budget. Said to just move slightly. And again, just like the Thermotech P3, the instructions are terrible. I mean, that's what it shows you. It wouldn't budge and eventually just with applying a ton of pressure, I managed to get it off and put on the AMD bracket. Then I wasn't sure how to secure the standoff screws because these thumb caps weren't anywhere. They were actually in the Intel mounting bag. So there was a bag for AM4, but I didn't know, but the Intel bag had these thumb screws. So I did that and I put it in the wrong orientation initially. I think these pipes were down at the bottom or at the left or something. And then I realized I'd put the bracket on just at the wrong place. So I switched that around, put it back on and connected up the, the fan cable and the USB cable for RGB. So the only thing I need to do now is pull this off. Ooh. So I'm getting close to the end now. I've got most things connected, but I do need to resolve this bracket and graphics card situation. So the Thermotech P3 comes with two, I'm going to screw it away, comes with 
two of these little brackets and the idea is that you secure them here and the riser which is provided goes here and then connects to the X16 like that. So this is about 20 centimeters or so. And then this will connect to the riser. So it will connect like that. Now there's lots of different sections here to put this in. The idea is if I can put this in the very last slot, this card is so big, it actually hangs off about an inch and a half. So I'll need to check with the poles to see if I could use the glass with that. I'd be happy to just not use the glass with this case if it meant putting this in there. Because if I can put that at the end, and I can get that, you know, squeezed up at the end there, then I can put in my Elgato card there, and I can put my Thunderbolt card there. So now I've got the cards, and if I go right to the end, I've got about a millimetre or so, but there is enough room for me to put the graphics card here and have my capture card and Thunderbolt 3 card directly connected to the motherboard. The problem arises if I need to go one slot up. Now, moving one slot up does mean that the graphics card doesn't hang over the end and it kind of sits there. It sits flush really with the bracket, which is kind of what you want, I guess. But that means that I can't fit in those network cards. Uh, network cards. I can fit in the capture card and the Thunderbolt 3 card. Now, there is a way around that. I don't really have to use this Elgato card with this build, I can put it into my other PC and it may be better doing that. With the Thunderbolt 3 card here, I could actually just use a second riser. So, yes, best case scenario, I can hang it over the end. If that doesn't work, I need to move it back and I'll buy another riser. Perhaps use this riser for this and then I'll get a different riser for the graphics card. I'll see how I got on. It worked. As you can see, it did work. So I'm quite pleased with the build. There's still a few things to do and I'll talk about that in a second, but I did manage to get the graphics card in. I've still got the Elgato capture card and the Thunderbolt 3 card connected as well. I didn't have to sacrifice any of those cards and I didn't have to use any other risers. I thought I'd have to move them from horizontal to vertical. But yeah, I've got it going. Everything seems to be okay. I still have to run lots of updates and all that. The only thing that you might notice is missing right now is the ASUS logo here. And the reason is I can't actually add that yet. This logo here will appear when this USB cable is connected to my motherboard. But the problem is I've got two of the internal USB headers. One is for the, the front USB 2.0 ports and the other one is for my Thunderbolt 3 card. So I've got none left, but I can buy an internal hub and then I'll be able to get the ASUS logo up. It's not essential anyway, but you know, it is something I'll, I'll try and add to the system. So just to make it a little bit quieter for myself and for you, I'll shut the system down. We'll get rid of those fancy colors. As far as the build goes, and as far as this case goes, there's still a lot to do. So there will be other videos about this. I'll do a follow-up video and you know, about how I change this and how I fix things. But as far as building in this case, the Thermaltake P3 case is really, really good. I'm impressed by it. It's not perfect. There's a lot of sacrifices and you do have to, you know, work around what's there, but it's definitely more flexible than most PC cases. The manual is crap. It's really bad. What I would do is what I did. Look on YouTube, look what other people did with their builds and you know, just in little glimpses of videos, you'll see, oh, they put the bracket there, or they use that screw, and you'll get a better idea as to what's going on, because this manual is really poor. But what I like about this is that it is flexible, and it's easy to work around because of the open nature of it, but when you get the graphics card in there, certainly because I've got, you know, the cards here, you know, the, the capture card and the Thunderbolt card, does make it a little bit squashed, because the way that I've got it set up now, I need to take the graphics card off, and then that involves taking the bracket off underneath. Yeah, so it's, it's still not perfect. There's still a lot of, you know, kind of messing around to do. So as far as getting this on, I had to use one of the brackets, and there's a spare one. Now, I spent maybe about 20 minutes, 30 minutes with this, and I went through like three or four different screws. I tried washers. I couldn't get the bracket to connect here. I couldn't get it attached to this bracket. And then I saw one video online where the guy says, put the screws underneath. So what you do is you use thumb screws underneath and then you attach it to it. 
It's quite difficult to do that. You kind of have to like put the graphics card down and then just kind of find a hole and then secure it. But it's doable, it is doable. And I've got, I mean, you can see it there. I've probably got, what have I got? I think I've got about a millimeter between my Thunderbolt 3 card and the graphics card. <laughs> But it works, it does work. Right, so as far as how things are looking, there's a lot of things I can still do better. All the power cables are just kind of dangling down the side here. And at the top here, I guess I could have used one power cable that, you know, because it splits into two six plus twos, but I wanted more power and more overclocking potential, so I've used two cables. But the problem with that is, you know, I've got these extra cables just lying about. So I'll, I'll change the power cables at one point. That's something I would like to do. Um, as far as the, the GPU itself, this bracket is a little, it's secure here because of the, the standoff between the bracket and, and the power supply, but there's not one at the other side and it's very, yeah, it's not very secure. So what I need to do is make this a little bit more sturdy. So I'm going to maybe use cable ties or I don't know. I'm trying to think of something that allows me to secure this that I can change a lot. You know, if I use cable ties, I don't want to find them. If I, obviously these are smaller ones, but if I use cable ties to tie this to the case, then it makes it a little bit difficult to then take that off all the time. I need to think of some way that I can make this stand up, make it more secure, make it sit there and still make it flexible enough that I can take it off and, you know, tinker around with the motherboard, etc. But it works, I am happy. Now, I, I've kind of tied up most things on the back, and you can see that there. I, there's not much to really do there. I, I will tidy it up a little bit better, but I've done okay, I think. I'll maybe use a, a few more cable ties to make it better. So when I got this set up and I plugged it in, nothing happened. I was getting an error, nothing was working. Now that was caused because I hadn't updated the BIOS to this generation, this um, the 5950X. So this, when this board first came out, it was designed for the last generation of Ryzen chips. So I had forgot to upgrade the BIOS. Once I upgraded the BIOS, I still ran into one problem and it was actually coming from this pump. I'd put it into another header, which I thought was a USB header and it wasn't. I think it was maybe a fan. I don't know what it was, but it wasn't the right one. And it was causing the system not to load. So. I was speaking to my friend Mark about it and I just stripped it back down. I took all the memory modules out except one, just had the CPU and all that connected, it worked. And then I put everything back bit by bit. So I got loaded up and I'm sure you've done this before. You load it up and the resolution is like 800 pixels. And that was being caused by this graphics card. So the graphics card situation is something I've never had to deal with before because with Intel boards, you've obviously got integrated graphics. You don't have that with the AMD, so you really do need the graphics card to work. I was able to load up Windows, but it was basically flashing a black screen every few seconds, and then I was moving the mouse and it was disappearing, and it was a nightmare. But I updated the driver, it didn't fix it. But then I did a search online, and I found out the reason. The reason is, this is a Gen 4 board, but this PCI Express riser card is Generation 3. So... By default, the BIOS sets the, the PCI Express cards, the X16, X8, and X4, etc., sets them all to Gen 4. So what I did was I went to the BIOS and I changed it from Auto to Gen 3, and immediately everything was resolved. Loaded up, resolution was back to high, everything was good. You know, all the colors were on, everything was fine. So a few teething problems once I, I got everything put together, but after an hour or so, I managed to get it. I still have to, you know, register Windows and, and, you know, update software and all that. So there's a few other things I've not done yet. I've obviously still got the back off here, which I'll probably leave it off for the next week because I'm going to be playing around with this. The other thing you probably noticed is that I haven't added the poles. So this has got four poles which attach, and then you can put the tempered glass. Now, I don't think I'm going to put the tempered glass on now. I was previously thinking about doing it, but that's if the graphics card was further in. With the tempered glass, you know, coming to about here, it's really not good. You know, as far as the airflow goes, I'd have the glass right up to the graphics card. So because the graphics card is hanging off the bracket, I mean, it's 
you know, it's further away than where anything should, uh, anything should be, then I'm I'm so close to the glass that it's just not practical. So I'm going to leave the glass off. I do have the option of adding it later, and I'm sure I'm going to change this all around in the future as well. So moving forward, there are a few things I do need to fix. I want to tidy up some cables. I want to get that internal hub. I need to, you know, so that I can use this um, pump header RGB and all that. Um, these fans seem really good. The pump seems quite good as well. My friend was telling me about how, you know, I should have had the rad at the other side and have these cables down at the bottom. And I have seen a lot of people saying that. And then I've seen other people saying that as long as the CPU is higher. Again, this is something else I need to review and I need to review the memory situation as well with Ryzen because I am using my older memory sticks as well. So the build is complete. The hard work is done, in my opinion. But there's still a lot of things for me to do. Still a lot of things for me to tweak. Still need to benchmark things, overclock things, play around with things. But I'm pleased with it. I am pleased with it. And, you know, I, I bought this case thinking that I'd change it in the future. But I'll see how it goes on, you know, because if this is quiet enough and it, and it works well, this might be my main case. So thanks for watching, guys. Stay tuned. I will do more videos about this. In the next videos, I'll basically just be following up what I've done here today and yesterday and, you know, giving you updates on all the things that need to be resolved, all the things that need to be addressed. And I'll get it working. You can actually see I've added the Wi-Fi up here as well. So thanks for watching, guys. I hope you've been enjoying this series of videos. As always, please do leave a comment. I've really enjoyed all the comments I've heard from you guys um, about the build, etc. And stay tuned for more videos. Until next time, guys. Take care.